We have, uh, and I'm delighted, we're going to be speaking to a person that I highly admire, Phil Liget, who has worked in television as a presenter since 1978, and now he's the universal voice of cycling. Oh, and Emily Cherry, who is the executive director of the Bike Ability, Bike Ability Trust, who actually provides a world-leading cycling training program for children and families with, with the idea to ditch the cars and let's pedal to the metal. I am delighted to have you here, guys. So thank you very much. Wonderful. Thanks, Aglantina. Thank you for that introduction. Um, so uh, we're here to inspire you. So Phil and I are going to talk for the next few minutes just about <laughs> inspiring you to take that action and to get on your bikes and get cycling. Um, so I've been a longtime supporter of Jeremy and the Peace One Day team um, for many years, uh, absolutely. And I think we need to thank them for their leadership in this space. You know, without climate action, we would not have, we will not have peace and sustainability. We won't have a future for our children when our resources and our biodiversity disappear. So we have to act now and Phil and I are absolutely here today to talk to you about how cycling plays a key role in that so before I ask Phil to talk to you all about all things cycling as the voice of cycling across the world um, let me give you a few special facts so choosing to walk and cycle can reduce your carbon emissions by up to 75% what a huge win for cleaning up our air real simple action that we can take and if we look at the UK only around 2% of our journeys are made by bike and actually half of our car our journeys are less than five miles that's a distance that's easily traveled on a bike and sadly only about three percent of our children walk or cycle to school in the UK but if we all were to take that action to get on our bikes we would not only help uh, clean up the planet clean up um, the, our carbon emissions here in the planet but we'd also help with preventable deaths as well and I know you've heard it here today on Climate Action Live that that really shocking figure of seven million global deaths down to environment and air change and, and air quality these are preventable deaths so by the end of this section I hope Phil and I are going to get you on your bike so Phil this weekend you're you're literally heading well you're not quite heading you're in a studio but you will be reporting on your 49th tour de france from Brittany at the start <laughs> this weekend which is an incredible achievement um but people will also know as the voice of cycling that you are not just passionate about cycling but you're huge with your wife trish really passionate about conservation as well um so what role do you think cycling plays in inspiring climate action and peace well, I think it's just about everything. Um, I was not a sportsman at all. I couldn't play football. I couldn't play rugby. I couldn't play cricket, but I could pedal a bicycle. And there was no car, of course, in my family at the time. And so I just got uh, a bike, which I bought over two years, paying, I think it was two shillings a week uh, till it was paid for. And I went fishing on my bike. And from that, I became a cyclist. But of course, I also went to school every day of my life, my school life. Uh, only on one day did I not go to a, a school on the bike. It was a Wednesday, that's how well I remember it. And I was late both times. So all the other days I was bang on time. And, you know, it, we're not just talking climate change now. Young people are certainly not getting enough exercise either. I'm not taking part in who's fat and who's thin. But the basic thing is exercise is crucial now for the youngsters as they grow up and it all benefits climate change big time great so at, at the bikeability trust i mean it's great to know that you were cycling um and, and if only bikes were still only costing two shillings that would be a great thing wouldn't it um, <laughs> but <we've>, that was <laughs> a week <laughs> it was a week there you go um so we've we've trained three and a half million children already in bikeability which is a fantastic achievement and our training is about getting people to choose active travel so giving them confidence and then getting to make that choice to get on their bike and we're working um with the uk's department of transport and the prime minister who's got this great vision here in the UK um, for boosting walking and cycling plans. So the UK's vision is that um, half of journeys uh, will be walked or cycled in towns by uh, 2030 and they're investing in safer local uh, walking and cycling routes and bike fit, uh, vouchers to fix broken or unused bikes and a commitment to offer cycle training to every child or every adult. Those things are really tangible that will help climate change in the future. Um, so I think, you know, Phil, with you, your role in you've gone from everyday cycling to reporting on the sport do you think mm. that the sport of cycling could do more to inspire children and and everyone to get on their bikes and to help tackle climate change in that way 
Well, these days, of course, we regularly win the Tour de France, which is something I never thought I would have said just 20 years ago. I didn't think I'd ever commentate on a British winner of the Tour de France. But cycling here now is extremely popular. It's not a Cinderella sport on television now. It's a big sport on television. And we've won the Tour de France almost every year uh, with a, either a British rider or the British team uh, since uh, 2012 when Bradley Wiggins uh, got the first victory for Great Britain. Um, and once you've got the champions of a sport, then everybody wants to emulate them, whatever the sport. And so kids are now riding bikes. What you said about the bike riding is absolutely true. If you, 3% is ridiculous for short journeys, and no, that's all we do in Great Britain. Because take Holland or, or the Netherlands and take Denmark. Everybody goes shopping on a bicycle. Even if it's a case of park and ride, they park the car and they ride the bicycle into the towns. The towns are not are car free. You have to ride in on your bike or walk. Take your take your groceries back to your car and drive off with your bicycle on the roof or in the trunk. And so, yes, look, cycling is is the way to go. At the moment, the government are helping. I think it's fifty pounds they will give you towards um, servicing your bike. Uh, it's, it's it's enough to get your bike properly serviced. But the, the most important advice I can give anybody who, who's now going to go and get their bike and go for a ride is, first of all, don't go out to the bike shop and pay £3,000 for the bicycle. You won't get the benefit of a great bike until you can ride it properly. So pay far, far, far less than that. If you're getting a bike out the garage from 20 years ago, have it done up. It's not, not, not going to cost you more than 50 quid. And then go for a small ride. Don't go out and try to beat the world record when you start to cycle because you'll come back after five miles and say i'll never touch that bike again it's too hard you gently take up a pastime it's just like doing your first walk to the shops you do it all the time once you've learned you can walk a mile the most important thing is you've got to do something to stop the emissions and also your health improves tenfold because of it cycling is the kindest pastime to the body you don't pull muscles, you don't break bones, unless you fall off badly, but you don't normally fall off. I think our biggest battle is to persuade parents uh, and them to persuade their children that this is the way to go. They sh and the schools have to be brought into this too. Many schools do not allow bicycles in the schoolyard because they don't want them there. And yet you can't get to the schoolyard doors because of all the parked vehicles. That's got to stop. Mum and dad have got to take the kids to school on a bicycle and leave the bicycle there so they can ride home again later in the day. And the benefits are tenfold. You will feel a better person. When I'm writing a speech or before I do a commentary, I go for the bike ride. Now, for me, I'll go a little bit further than what I'm talking about. I'll probably go for a 20 or 30 mile bicycle ride. During that ride, my speech will have been written to perfection or my first words in my commentating will be ready to go because of all the oxygen that's come into my head. When I worked in Fleet right. Street and li lived in North I, I, London, I, I used to Phil, go on a bike there. I think, Phil, you've given some fantastic top tips there in kind of developing people's confidence, which is great, and just been that real passionate advocate for cycling. Um, and I think if anyone is worried or they're concerned and they're worried and they haven't got the confidence to cycle, you can definitely head to bikeability.org.uk and check out all of our safe top tips for um, cycling and to encourage you to get on your bike with confidence. It's the right thing to do for the climate. And Phil, we're definitely saying it's the right thing to do for fun and for, and for confidence as well, isn't it? Absolutely. So uh, thank you so much. We're delighted to take part in Climate Action Live and uh, get on your bikes, everybody.